Richard. Um, I'm sure some of you, if not most of you, have been hearing and seeing stuff about the news about getting your information hacked or you know attacked and stuff like that, breaches, things of that nature. Um, so one of the biggest things that um, you know we noticed is that the lack of security within the small to medium-sized businesses space. Right. Um, obviously, you've seen things with large enterprises such as Equifax, Under Armour, things of that nature. Um, you know, but what are the SMBs doing now to fully secure their entire, you know, infrastructure? And um, one of the things that we're doing here at Clarium is focusing on that, especially in the South Florida, Florida region, um, you know, because of the growth and things that are happening from a business and a startup perspective here locally. So if you guys are involved in the startup industry or just in terms of, or just in terms of growth in general, you'll see that there's a lot of things happening, not just now, but even in the next three to five years, Especially with you know the Formula One race coming here, you're going to see a lot more businesses opening up, um, you know, tenfold, right? Um, attracting all these multi-billionaires from all over the place, so real estate, insurance, all these different industries are going to boom, right? Technology, there's a lot going on with Israel and India and AI and AR, VR and stuff like that, you know. And cyber is really the core that wraps around all of it because you got to look at if a breach happens, what's that going to do to you, right? The majority of SMBs go bankrupt if they get hit with a with an attack. So, um, you know, I want to put a quick presentation together because obviously uh, right now, you know, I think cybersecurity is probably the most important news out there in the market, just understanding um, key values and, you know, um, uh, key practices that go involved into securing your entire framework. It seems like we have a tech guy and a software guy over here, so maybe this, you guys might know. Yeah, we're very, very, very involved with that. Yeah. We spend a lot of resources to secure people of course. secure the application level, but it's a layer. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, layer. So a layered approach is actually the right way to go, right? A multi-dimensional approach. So I'm not a complete expert, you know. Uh, I've only been in the space for about a year and a half, um, you know. But uh, I've worn many hats throughout my career. So we'll get into it, and I'll just kind of go over. So this is going to be just a quick background about cyber, and then you know, getting into kind of what some of the key terms are to understand, to look for, stuff like that, and kind of what you can do to help secure yourself. I'm going to go through it quickly because I know time is of an essence, but uh, any questions, feel free to interrupt and ask, and I'll gladly answer the best of my ability. Just a background about me from NYC. Um, you know, I just moved here just under a year ago. Um, I am a former athlete, played uh, professional basketball in Europe for a little bit. Um, I own my own event company back in New York, which I sold uh, after opening up for about three and a half, four years. Been in sales for a while, and like I said, been in security for eh, just under one and a half years. Um, all right, so a little bit about Clarium. Um, we are headquartered in Miami, Florida, um, you know, with offices in Michigan uh, and the Netherlands, uh, Amsterdam, actually. Um, we are looking at opening up an office in South America. Uh, we were looking in Brazil, but uh, with the whole economy and infrastructure government stuff going on there, we're not going to open up there, probably in Panama or uh, uh, Mexico City right now. Um, founded in 98 as an analytics company, um, currently... Uh, now, obviously not. Now, more we're a pure play cybersecurity company. So you're just uh, over a hundred million in revenue. Um, we are an, uh, an MBE, and uh, we have partnered up with four of the top uh, six cyber insurance carriers in the world. We are the only MSSP to do so. So, what is cybersecurity, right? Um, you know, general just techniques, you know, that protect your networks, your infrastructure, data, etc. Right. I'm um, just showing you a quick background. Some people don't even know what cybersecurity really is, right? So um, it involves protecting information, you know, your systems from major threats, major, si major cyber attacks. Some of these threats include, uh, you know, application attacks, malware, ransomware, which is a type of malware. I'll get into that. Phishing attacks, exploit kits, et cetera, right? Um, so one of, the, one of the biggest things right now that you guys are going to see in the next two, three years is that the demand or the supply for cybersecurity is going gonna, is gonna to drastically increase. Okay, um, the attacks are going to get greater and greater and greater, more substantial. So they're saying um, by Frost and Sullivan, uh, in 2020, we'll have um, a lack of uh, cyber professionals, and there'll, there'll be um, uh, infosex, information security professionals, in 2020 will hit 2 million um, in the U.S. alone. 6 million globally, 2 million just in the U.S. will we'll, um, not have, we'll, there won't be any opportunities for, for people because the demand and supply won't, won't be there. So it's the growth that's happening right now, um, you know, in the cyber industry is uh, pretty substantial. Um, so 
you'll see that there's not a lot of sk not a lot of skilled people in the industry. So you're going to see two million go for it. All right. So you're saying in that slide that by 2020 there'll be a shortfall of two million trained people yeah. in cybersecurity. Yeah. So how does one go about getting the training if someone were in high school and wanted to yeah. go into a lucrative field? Absolutely. What would they so be doing? right now universities and so some of the universities here actually in Miami, Miami Dade College and St. Thomas. All right, they're launching um, cyber programs, cyber training programs for students, for graduate students, um, and even undergrad students. We're actually working with Miami Dade College right now, um, assisting them in some of the things that they're doing. Um, but that's one way. There's other online tests you can take to be become, you know, a professional, uh, not a professional, or at least get the training done. Um, you know, but the biggest thing with cyber is also your experience, right? And and the, the uh, certificates you have. You know, um, so those are some of the ways that you can you can go about it. But yeah, it's all about getting into the getting involved in the industry, understanding computer science, understanding programming, stuff like that as well. That obviously is a backbone for it, right? Um, you know, moving ahead. So there's 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 a lot that you can do. It's just the thing is, is do you want? It depends on your you know, your, your persona. Do you like the hacking aspect of it? Do you like to go in and break in and see what people are doing? And does that, you know, uh, interest you? Or do you want to be more face-to-face, front-to-front? So then you look at different options. So it really depends on if cyber is an interest of people or not, you know. Um, and right now we're seeing that it's, it, it's there, but it's not there at the same time. I think now college students are looking more so to get involved in it because they see where the growth is going. Um, you know, but it's going to be around for the next five to ten years easy. Like, I think this is going to be the biggest, other than AR, VR, and AI, it's the next industry to really dig in and get involved in, in, in a big way. So. All right. Types of attacks. Just, I just, there's, there's, listen, there's a multitude of different attacks. I'm just, I just put some of the key terms on there uh, that are like the hot topic words right now. So, obviously, malware. Um, malware is just a software that's, um, you know, designed to cause damage um, to any any of your networks or like data? Yeah. Uh, like what they call the virus? Yeah. Um, to, it's more. It's more malicious than just a virus, though. Um, then we have uh, phishing, which I'm sure you guys have come across. So right now, um, actually, I'm just reading an article today morning. I'm away here. Um, right now, the number one attack to SMBs is phishing attack. Right. So that's through your email. Okay. Then they also have something. I don't know if you guys have seen or been hit with the phishing attack. Some of y'all might have. Some of y'all might have not. Um, it's pretty much an email that gets sent to your, yeah, to your inbox or whatever. You'll see, oh, it's sent from my CEO. Click it, you know. You click it, and it takes you to a whole different area, and boom, then the virus is in your system, and you're kind of done. Just a quick question. I heard at one time that if you open this email, mm -hmm. and even if you don't click on the link, you just by passing your mouse on top of the email, it already downloads something. No, 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 it won't. No, 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 no. Okay. Just by, okay, so that's, no, but that's that's a way to detect if it's a bad link or not, right? So one of the, one of the, when you guys get, if you guys get trained on understanding how to look for different attacks, right? One of the things you can do with a phishing attack is when you scroll your, your cursor over the link, not click it, just touch it over. You'll see where the original, where it's originated from, right? Yeah, and, and if it, and then you, what you do is you copy that link, take, open up another browser, paste that link, and see where it takes you. You can do that way. But the moment you click that link and it's it's a bad link, the virus is in your system. Yeah. yeah. So that's right now. That's the number one um, attack currently in 2018 for the small to medium sized businesses. Right. Um, then you have uh, whaling attack. That's another form of phishing, but that's targeted to the CEOs or the C level executives. Right. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's how they get. That's how they get. That's how they get. Uh, you know, the big the big guns to really, you know, get hit get hit with uh, more substantial level of fine. Um, ransomware. I'm sure you guys have all heard of, right? Um, that's when they encrypt your files, but also lock you out for a ransom, and you're usually paying in Bitcoin. So, good luck. <laughs> um, man in the middle attacks. That's another. That's another common one right now. Um, that's. Think of eavesdropping, really. So if you're on the phone with a banker or something like that, um, you could be talking to the wrong person. And they could be just asking you questions to steal your information, your password, your personal info, stuff like that. So think of, think of eavesdropping when you hear of MPM or man in the middle. Um, and then denial of service, right? Uh, so 
when you have, you know, um, uh, desktop or whatever, or you, you're, you're on, on the network, right? Um, what, the, what the hackers do is they send a ton of information, a ton of files, nonstop, and just flood you completely with files. So it actually locks you out of the system or the network, right? And in, in, in response, they'll, they'll able to, you know, lock you out and stuff like that and hit you for whatever they want to hit you. So that's called denial of service, DDoS. So you're going to see a lot of that as well. That's actually number three right now in the SMB space, um, locking people out and, uh, you know, um, tries to obtain whatever kind of information, passwords, things that nature from, from the employees or CEO, whoever he wants to hit. So just a couple, those are just a couple, you know, key terms and stuff like that. Oh, to look for. Um, well, that's so that's so that's the whole remediation process, right? Um, that all depends on who your company has, if they have outsourced, how big their team is, uh, stuff like that, which I'm going to get to in a second. Um, one of the biggest issues with reasons why SMBs get hit consistently, um, there was an article released about a, two months ago. Uh, stating about 68% of small and medium-sized businesses are getting hit on a daily basis right now. Why? Because of the lack of education, lack of budget, which I have up here. But um, that all depends on the training they go through, who your technician guy is, or what company they've outsourced to come in and remediate. But here's the thing with remediation, right? Remediation detection, it's already too late. The attack is already in, then you're done, right? So they've already taken what they needed to take, right? Now you're just trying to get everything back to normal, right? So, yeah, there, there are ways, but uh, at that point it's too late. So, obviously you want to take proper steps to prevent the attacks from happening all in all. Now listen, can you protect 100% of attacks? No, that's like saying, can you pre prevent a hurricane from hitting Miami, right? It ain't gonna happen, you know, it's not possible. Hackers are always two steps ahead. But you can put proper preventative measures in place to help alleviate the risk of hit when and if it does hit. And not if, it's more so when right now in today's day and age. Right, so that's the whole key with cyber. So why are SMBs a target? Going back to you know, your question. Number one, the biggest thing is lack of education. Believe it or not, CEOs, CIOs, they just don't know. They're not ahead of the game. Um, and you'll be very surprised on how, how they think that what they currently have is good. Um, easier to hack a small and medium-sized business than an enterprise, right? Because, the la because lack of layers of security that they have, all right? Not enough budget. To hire a full-on security team, a CTO, CIO, CISO, Chief Information Security Officer, it's expensive, very expensive. You're looking at close to a million dollars a year just to hire that full entire team. It's, it, it's true, right, if you think about it. Um, a CTO, depending on his, his, you know, his, his background, can go up towards 300,000 a year. You know, a CISO, depending on his background and certifications, can go up to three, 400,000 a year. You know, right there you're in six, 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 six to 800,000 just a year, and that's just on the personnel. Now you've got to implement the technology and purchase the technology. That's expensive, the firewalls, etc. So use of leg legacy solutions, right? So um, all the solutions, like you guys know, Norton, McAfee, Mantech, those are more legacy solutions that focus on the known malware or known malicious threats out there, right? As uh, I forgot my friend's name on the far left. Keith. Keith, as Keith mentioned, they take more of a layered approach Right, which is also kind of called a multi-dimensional approach. Right, you want to layer your security system and software with latest technology in the market, understanding what's best of breed solutions out there that'll help now on the preventative side. So that's another reason why SMBs are very uh, targeted. They also have valuable data. Right, I mean, at the end of the day, everyone everyone keeps data, be it in your cell phone, be it um, you know in your emails, be it this, be it that. You know, even if you're an SMB and you're doing, you know, just a few million dollars a year, you get hit with a ransomware attack, right? And you get hit for a quarter of a million dollars, that's gonna take a pretty substantial, you know, loss from you, right? So you gotta look at things things like that, you know? Um, and then also, one of the things is after an attack, SMBs still don't beef up their security, okay? Um, they get hacked multiple times. So even once they get hacked, they're still not aware of what they need to do now. All right, and they just keep what they have. They think, oh, we got, we got remediated, we're fine. We're not gonna update our system. And they get hacked again. They get hacked again. Um, I was actually reading an article uh, that got released to me through my Google Alerts that I have set. Um, they said 40% of 
of SMBs that get hit get hit two, three times more. Again, right? Which is pretty interesting, you know? So that was cool. And then um, last thing is, you know, I have on here is that, you know, security tends to get pushed to the back burner, as I mentioned, because CEOs are not focused on the development. Um, they're focused more on developing their products, their services, instead of securing their entire network, right? Nowadays, if you, if you look at it, I think the most important thing is, as you're building a company, make sure that you're taking the proper security measures to secure your entire network or framework, because if you do grow, right, obviously that's the plan, if you do grow and you get hit, majority of the time you probably go out of business real fast, real quick, all right? Um, and also compliancy, that's another big thing I'll get into in a second. So, results of a breach, loss of customers, right? Fines and legal fees, obviously that's substantial. Insurance premiums, denials, or hikes. So that's, that's an interesting topic right there, right? So because of the risk factor involved with getting hit, there are certain industries that insurance carriers won't write cyber policies to. Hospitality is one, higher education is another. So what we've done as, as a company, um, we've gone to, as I mentioned earlier, four of the top six cyber insurers and said, listen, if we can help alleviate the risk for your, for, for your clients, will you be able to write a policy for these clients and open it up with a discount as well? And they've said yes. So now that's what, one of the things that we're doing. Um, loss of contracts, right? Loss of reputation. If you get, I mean, look what happened to Equifax. They went bankrupt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, yeah, yeah. They filed for bankruptcy. Bankruptcy is one. Loss of trust, you know, loss of brand image. You know, um, and then the average cost to a data breach right now in the small to medium sized industry is about $120,000. That's the average cost that hackers are taking. Now that's averaged amongst all the entities, right? Um, but that is the average hit. It's a substantial, it's a substantial hit. You know, so definitely it's, it's, it's very important to understand the severity of what a breach can, can cause you as, as an entity, whether it's personal entity, whether it's small company of two, three people, whether it's a large company of a thousand employees, it doesn't matter. Proper steps to take. Number one, in my opinion, is education. I think that's the biggest issue we have right now. Um, people are very stuck in their ways um, and not understanding what's best to breed in the market and what's the latest trends in the market happening. So education, educate, educate, educate. Um, speak to your IT team, see what they're using. You know, get an understanding of what kind of security software you guys have internally. That's very important, right? Um, everyone has a cell phone. Mobile device is, is huge, right? Your entire information is on your cell phone. If you get hacked, what do you get? What's going to happen? How many different networks do you connect to a day? Think about it, right? So that's something to just have in the back of your mind. Um, quarterly vulnerability ex uh, assessments. Um, this is essential because this will see what kind of vulnerabilities lie within your your framework, your infrastructure, at, at your entity, right? So this is very important to do, constantly updating what you guys have going on, um, you know, uh, because cybersecurity changes on a day-to-day -day basis. There's always a new attack, there's always a new something happening within, within the security industry, every day. So it's good to stay ahead of the game and understand, you know, what you guys are doing. Upgrade legacy technologies, all right? Um, stop looking into the detection and remediation standpoint and start thinking prevention. That's the number one important thing you can do other than educate. Start thinking, how can we prevent the attack from happening instead of thinking, oh, we'll let it happen and then we'll, we'll hire a company to come and remediate it or, or detect it, you know, so forth and so forth. So that's another thing. Compliancy, make sure you guys are compliant, right? Um, and I'm gonna touch upon one of the biggest monkeys in the room, probably the biggest monkey in the room right now, which is the GDPR. Um, so obviously HIPAA high tech, that's focused on healthcare. PCI is payment processing, right? I think you mentioned something about credit, credit cards. Card industry yeah, so you guys are, you guys are, should should be PCI compliant. Yeah. What yeah. is GDPR? I'm sorry. I'm gonna get into that right now. So GDPR is the Government Data Protection uh, Regulation. Uh, it's uh, it's the biggest monkey right now in the room. Um, so you, the the EU launched this regulation back two years ago. Okay. No one on the planet took it seriously. They thought. We're not gonna worry about it, whatever. Well, it just got launched last month and now everyone's going crazy about it. So what it is, is um, it's pretty much a data privacy thing um, that the EU said, if you're not fully compliant in all, it's like 120 steps, 26 of them are data privacy focused. 
So if you're not fully compliant with the GDPR regulations, all right, your business is going to be fine. Well, that, now it doesn't. Now it doesn't matter what business, as long as you do business with any e European residents or citizens, you've got any EU data, right? If you have any EU information on where they live, you're open to the GDPR laws. Whether you have a company based in the US, Latin America, Australia, it doesn't matter, right? It's anyone that does business with EU. You're open to a fine of 4% of your gross revenue or $20 million, whichever is greater. Well, so, so they are targeting you guys to make sure that companies are secure, they're taking the right measures, they're taking the right precautions. Um, you know, and now insurance carriers, law firms are not even writing policies unless you're GDPR compliant. You know, hotel we're doing a huge uh, presentation uh, with hospitality, um, end of July and beginning of August. We're doing two different things for the hospitality industry here, um, focusing on GDPR and co the compliance around it and why security around that is very essential uh, for companies. So it doesn't matter if you're an SMB, doesn't matter if you're a large entity. Um, you will go out of business if you're doing business in the EU and you're not fully GDPR compliant. So that, that means having European clients, imagine all the hotels here, what they, they have to do because they have the information. So if yeah. you're doing business with a European client and you have their information, you have to be GDPR compliant. compliant. Anyway, even, even real estate, right? Think about how many, oh, yeah. how many people come here and buy homes from Europe. And if your company keeps their information, I mean, you're going to keep their payment stuff, right? Right, they're buying from you. You're going to keep that information. That's information stored, right? You're going to, they're going to fill out their address, stuff like that. That's stored now. Every, every and now everybody, as Keith mentioned, he's, he's in cloud, so everyone is starting to move their information to the cloud. So now the thing is, here's here's the crazy part. Everyone's thinking, oh, but the cloud is secure. No, it's not. Not at all. AWS, all that's not secure. You have to secure your own entity. AWS is just something you can implement and put your information to. It's just a cloud service. But that's not necessarily secure. So there's so many different ways and tactics to really go and layer yourself to becoming properly, you know, secured. So go for it. I'm just curious. You were saying about the demand, the demand about people to uh, make search on internet, and the demand is huge, right? Yeah. Looking for people. So what you were saying, like, you know, a couple of years you're gonna have like. 80% of the world population <laughs> trying to protect the internet from like 100 ha hackers. So, because you know, how many hackers is making yeah. software and yeah. not that much. But have you uh, any way to detect from where these attacks are coming? Yeah, of course. Way to yeah. go to them and. Mm -hmm. Well, so we can't, okay, so here's, so here's the thing, right? <laughs> It's, so uh, it's, 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 it's illegal, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. So it's illegal for us to go back to the hackers and tr try to, you Why? know. Well, be, be, because it's not, that's not, I mean, that's just not, you know, a company right. can't, ha we hack someone, that's, you know what I mean? We, if we're getting permission. We broke the law to hack him. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's illegal. But we can detect where the attack came from. Uh -huh. Right, we can we and can see alert and alert. Well, of course you can. Yeah. So that's that's the detection side of things of that nature, right? But why even the question the question goes back to why even focus on that aspect when you should focus on well how can we prevent it all in all, right? How can we stop the attack from happening before it even happens? Now I didn't I didn't put in here, but there's you know one of the biggest areas for attack are endpoints. Now what is an endpoint, right? Endpoint is your cell phone. You know, your desktop, your laptop, iPad, iPod, whatever you want to call it. Um, those are considered endpoints. So right now, 90% of attacks happen at the endpoint, right, which is a massive number. You know, then you have emails and stuff like that that always get attacked. Mobile devices, you know, they not, get attacked. Not at the cloud anymore. Not no, cloud is very important. <laughs> let's, not, let's not joke about it. Cloud yeah. is definitely, definitely a, a, big, a big factor. So there's a small uh, amount that is happening I mean, right now. What's a small amount? Still millions, right? What's a, but what's a, what's a small amount? No, it's more than this. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I think right now, um, personally, what I'm seeing, your endpoints, your cell phone, are probably the, the biggest lead ways of attack because it's easier, right? Um, now, credit cards. If you go to Europe, there's a video online um, that shows uh, an ATM machine had a falsified.
credit card implementation thing of or whatever you want to, I don't know what the name for that is, but you could remove it, and that's a, that's a credit card scanner they have. So now they're stealing your information, right? The moment you put your card in, it's done. They have your entire credit card information. You're gonna plug in your number, you're done. You know, your debit card. So it's, there's, there's a lot happening. And then obviously back up your company's data, make sure all your data's backed up, you know, and uh, password protection. Make sure you change your password every 90 days. All right, so very, very important. Um, so I just put this on here. This is one of the services we offer for the SMBs. Um, so one of the things that we've done now is um, we realize how expensive it is for small to medium sized businesses to really attain top enterprise grade solutions. Um, so we created a service uh, that um, allows you to attain top enterprise grade solutions um, for your entity or whatever it might be um, for a very low minimal cost. So just something that we've done. Any questions? Oh no, okay. Um, just, yeah, just something that we've done and that's kind of it. And then there's, yeah, questions, anyone. I do have a question. Go for it. Um, what are the top hacker hotspots geographically and what, what, what are the demographics? Yeah, um, very good question. Right now, US and Europe are the top two regions that are getting hacked. But now what I'm seeing- The region. No, where the hackers are coming from. Oh, Russia. Russia. <laughs> Russia, yeah. Uh, Definitely the biggest. Um, you're, you are seeing a lot in the Middle East, stuff like 